group goes and, and how it got started was uh, basically a handful of us hunters that live around here, grew, grew up around here, and uh, respected each other. I got a phone call from one, one guy one day and he said, hey, we have a wolf problem and we want to try to get something going. You know, are you interested in helping out? And I said, yeah, I'm highly interested. And what got us to that point was uh, being in Idaho most of my life, logged most of my life. <clears throat> we logged in Avery for eight or nine years and we hunted there too. And we watched the elk go from just excellent elk hunting to the last year we were there, you were hard pressed to find a bull, let alone a cow. And if you did, there were just two or three in a group. And we started seeing the wolves just move in and move in and move in, more of them. And then when we, we quit walking down there, we came up here to Panhandle region, which is where we live. The boys and I, most of my boys started getting old enough to hunt. We started running into all these kills when we were snowmobiling. Moose, elk, mule deer. And, and they were like, what's going on? You know, and I said, well, I think what's happened is the reintroduction of the wolf was very successful. And I think it's gone farther than anyone thought. And uh, so long story short, that's when we got the call from the, what is now Foundation for Wildlife Management. We started this group and we're passionate about elk recovery. We're passionate about keeping the wolves in proper balance. I don't know if balance is a good word, but that's what I'm using right at the moment. And I don't want people to take us wrong. We're not against ratification at all. I think that the numbers that the fish and game have given us to sustain in the state of Idaho is great. But to have three or four times that amount in one region is unacceptable because it's just devastating to our elk and moose and mule deer. I mean, it's just crazy. So that's, that's kind of where my, my end of it comes in, where I got involved, and, and I'm passionate. I want things to be there for my grandkids. I want things to be there for my kids to enjoy, hunt, and just to enjoy. So that's, that's how we got started. game biologist for the Panhandle, Jim Hayden, uh, says there's 17 packs of, of wolves in the Panhandle that live here year-round with another 14 packs that are border packs between uh, Montana, Canada, and Washington. Uh, so if you kind of average that out, there's probably 24 packs of wolves in the Panhandle, which there's about 8.3 8 wolves in a pack. It, it kind of equates to 200 to 300 wolves in the Panhandle, and that was before this spring wolf population, which increased the population by 40%. So you have to to harvest 40% with hunters and trappers. Uh, wolves, predators kill predators. Lions kill uh, wolves. Wolves kill lions. Uh, bears the same way. Uh, and wolves will kill wolves at about at a rate of about 15%, if you believe. The, the scientists or the biologists that study these kinds of things. Uh, units uh, four, six, seven, and nine in the Panhandle have too many wolves. And that's what this organization is all about. Uh, and I think, uh, I think our legislature is in a position right now where if, if I mean, it's obvious to me as a, as a previous Fish and Game Commissioner that something's got to change because uh, our wolf population, we've got uh, 300 wolves in the panhandle. The state is required by the federal requirement or the state requirement. Our legislature said we'll have uh, 150 wolves and 15 breeding packs. Uh, the federal requirement is 100 wolves and 10 breeding packs. And we probably have 1,000 to 1,500 wolves depending on who wants to make a good guess? Uh, but, but our biologists, they can actually physically count the, the over 200 wolves in the panhandle, and that's a problem.
started by trapping when they opened the first season, um, hoping to protect the, what was left of the elk population in the, the Lightning Creek drainage of Unit 1. And uh, in trying to learn to trap, having no experience, I knocked on some doors of guys that had reputations for knowing what they were doing. These people, um, each of three individuals, had the same story to tell. They could show me exactly how to set this thing in the dirt, in the place, convince the wolf that this is the right place to step or put it where he would step on his own, two different methods. Um, one of them showed me the, the foothold method and, and another showed the snares and a period down the road a, a gentleman come in and, and helped correct it. In talking to each of these guys and one of them really in particular, I said, you're going to trap a lot of wolves. And this guy looks at me and says, I'm not trapping any wolves. He says, it's too expensive to trap wolves. You hunt elk, right? Yeah. The guy looks at me and says, yeah, I hunt elk. I says, you're obligated to trap wolves. He says, you're not getting it. I'm obligated to make house payments. He says, I can't afford to trap wolves. This is going to be way more expensive than you've ever realized. The first year I spent $3,500 trapping wolves. The second season I spent more than that. And this upcoming season will double what I spent last season in order to get into a backcountry unit now. We've made a difference. My, my friends and I have made a difference. These guys through the foundation have made a difference. But to get into the backcountry units and do this is cost prohibitive. And now I see why these three gentlemen told me they couldn't afford to trap wolves. They can't. So when we got together and started talking about how to come up with this solution, I had no idea the solution was in front of us. I said, the guys can't afford to. And one of the guys at our round table says, then let's pay them to do it. Let's reimburse them their expenses. Let's make it work for them. They're the ones that know how. They're going to do it day and night, whether we're there or not. They're going to trap. They've always trapped. It's what they do is trap. They don't know anything different than trapping. They love to be there. Us, it's a mission to save out. It's a mission to conserve. It's, it has nothing to do with wanting to trap, wanting to catch a wolf. It's wanting to do something to make a difference from what we've seen take place. Last year in the Panhandle unit, we trapped 51 wolves. The 2012-13 season. It was 118% of what we trapped the previous season. 118%. The other four wolf regions in the state that allowed trapping of wolves trapped 80% of what they'd trapped in the previous season. We were the only region to have an increase. We had an increase of 18%. And, and when you talk to the big game biologist for the Panhandle region, he'll tell you we made a difference. He sat at the very first meeting we had and helped write the guidelines to make this happen. He'll tell you we made a difference. And we know that we can continue to make a difference. It's just a matter of, as Tony said, being able to expand that to help other than just the Panhandle region. Taking it to the next level is what we've got to do. I mean, there are other people that are interested in doing this, and we just need to get it to the next level. Somehow, this little organization that these guys have put together in northern Idaho has got to expand, uh, I think, uh, not only statewide, but, but Montana needs to pay attention to what, what's going on, and, and so does uh, Washington and Wyoming. And so we're confident that in the near future, that the, we'll have the finances necessary to keep this thing going and actually make it work well. And I'm, I'm also watching our bordering state, Washington, and I've been keeping their articles. They're going to be facing some tough stuff here. And, and we want to be ready to help them out in every way we can. And we want, we've already got a lot of tools in place. So anybody or any state who wants to come apart and get our information, we're more than willing to do that. We're not about keeping it to ourselves. We're about informing everybody, teaching everybody. Let's, let's get this thing done right and do it well. Uh, from my standpoint, being in the retail business and supporting this business basically is, is one of my 
job is going to be to try to train people or, or to teach people how to hunt these animals start in December after the regular hunting seasons are over through March 31st. So with hopefully we can get some seminars and, and some groups together to better understand how to hunt because uh, there's not a lot of information out there from the old people that hunted these back in the 1800s and early 1900s. So we can make a difference if we, if we get enough people out there to hunt. The tools are coming, the calls are coming, the information is, is starting to come, and so we need to get our hunting community more involved just as much as we need our traffic community.